Ace Music Art Studio. Today's project is an embossed peacock feather for the cover of my notebook. I'm still working through my off-cut stash and I found a copper piece that is just just the right size for using with one of the Esmeric Art Feather Collection stencils. Um, the stencil also look very good um, if you use it with pewter or alumina. I'm working on my, um, well it looks like marble, I don't think it is real marble. Um, tile that I prefer using as a hard surface. I also have my paper pad because that's where I'm going to do the tracing. So I really have to go very careful here on the placing. As I've mentioned, it is almost, it is a just, just, just fit here. I'm going to make some marks here just to have it as a guideline for me. Because with the stencil, it's a two-part stencil. That is the inner part that's going to need to go in there. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm first going to trace the inner part. The nice thing about the versatility of the stencil is that you can actually use it any way. You can first do the big feather and then you can add that and that will be raised more or more embossed it's i want it almost like a scratchy or an etched way so that's why i'm going to do that first i want it to stand out exactly the same height as what the rest of the feather is going to be standing out so i think i've got enough guidelines here for me so i'm just going to place it and i'm working on the front of my copper So with a stencil, it all depends on the look again that you would like to go for. With some stencils, you only have one way to use it. But there are some stencils that you can use it the positive as well as the negative way, depending on the look that you are going for. So for this one, I'm just going to do that. Yep, it should be. Let me just tape it there. Give it a good small tape, yeah. And as I said, I'm just merely going to trace the inside. Also with stencils, you will notice you have these little tabs that's here. And this is just to keep the design together. You can either use a Teflon tool, you can use a pencil, what you prefer. That is what you can trace with. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to do this with my Teflon tool. And also remember it's habit i catch myself sometimes doing it myself that when i get to one of those steps i want to trace it it happens quite often and then you have to go back in and try and get rid of it so i'm just going to go around and try not to trace on there and there i did it this one, I'm just going to go sort of in the center because I'm going to finish that. This is just a guideline and I'm going to go in there. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it down. I'm not going to push it out too much because it will be again pushed out with the... Um, when I do the whole peacock feather. So I'm just going to go in like this. And give it a slight once over with the Teflon tool as well. I'm not working too much on the detail because I am going to flatten it again so that it looks like it has just been engraved. But I want to have some definite marks there at least. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks good. You can also emboss this, keep it embossed, and you can use either a piece of leather or 
my preference is working on the back of um, a piece of floor it gives it enough height for that so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to and there I do exactly the same thing I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close up those tabs. Actually, for now, I think I'm just going to use it on the paper pad just to give it a slight definition and then I will work from there again. This is the first time that I'm using the stencil on copper. I've worked with it a couple of times on um, pewter as well as aluminum, but it's the first time I'm actually using it on copper. I have to say it is a little bit more difficult to work with copper than what it is to work with pewter or um, aluminum. It's just it's harder. So... I find that you have to press a little bit more or apply more pressure than what you would with the others. If I would have kept this embossed, I definitely would have gone in with a smaller point of my um, the Teflon tool or even have gone as far as using my metal refiner. But for now, I think I am good doing it this way. Try and get that even. Oh, and there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my paper stump, and I am going to all this that I have done the embossing and the things. I'm literally just going to flatten it out again. Because when you look at the um, peacock feather, you will notice that it's not really raised. It's all the same height and it's all flat. But again, you know, this is an art piece. It's your project. If you want it to be raised, go for it. It actually does look very nice if it is raised from the rest of the um, feather. So what you can also do is you just could have taken um, your tool and you just could have scratched it. So I actually think that might be a good idea now that I'm talking about that. So you're just giving it another extra dimension. That wasn't very really good because it wasn't really flat there. Oh, there you go. So the next thing that I'm going to do once I have flattened scratch here, I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to do start with the feathers. And that is the smaller feathers. So 
the only part that i am going to have raised here a little bit higher than what the um rest of the feathers is will be this the centerpiece over here now i can't even think about what you call it it will come to me in a second before i'm going to put my stencil back the next thing i am going to do is i'm going to make these small little scratch marks within the feather for that and then those ones will be connecting up with that there so it basically goes straight through and then from there i am just going to go out like that And with this, you can go as many feathers as what you like or lines as what you like. If you would like to have quite a few, then you can. The biggest thing is just once you start connecting up here that you are able to connect with these ones over here. So it doesn't look like much now, but there you can see this is how it looks already with the scratches going through. So now I'm actually going to put on my stencil. Oh, maybe if I put it the right way on, it will work. Yeah, so stencil does have a front and a back. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to line this up and tape this down. Working on the front on a paper pad and a paper pad can be a magazine that you have lying around. It's anything that is soft. It's about, I would say, thickness about three to five pieces. It all depends as well on how heavy handed you are. The reason I'm just tracing this is so that when I turn it around, I'm going to be working on my hard surface and to see where I need to start doing some of the embossing. I wouldn't really call it high relief. It is more just a sort of a, an emboss. And when you have something like this as well, when you look at this here, you have to decide which one you want to overlap. So would you like to have that one going at the bottom and this one coming up over top? Or would you have to have it vice versa? I think I'm going to let my top one go over the bottom one. So I'm not going to close that up. I'm just going to do this. And then for this side, I will actually trace that part. Is it going to be making a difference if you don't do it this way absolutely not you will figure it out as you are working so I always make sure that i can see that everything has been traced and it looks like it so i'm going to remove my paper pad and next step is using my paper stump just to go over all of this have to say it is definitely easier to work with um, pewter or aluminum with stencils than what it is with the copper because you really have to try and get into all the little nookies and crannies with that so next step I'm going to take my Teflon tool and I'm going to try an outline. I'm actually just going to push it up against the side of the stencil. As you can see, I am using the wider tip of the Teflon tool rather than the narrower one. And the only reason for that is because 
the copper is a little bit more difficult to work with. It is harder than what the pewter or the aluminum is. So I think this might just help doing it first this way. And then from there, using the sharper or the narrower end. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to push all of this right up until the edge of the stencil. with my paper stump again um, when I was looking here I saw that it looked pretty good and it is closed up to the edge here um, maybe right on those little sharp edges it needs a little bit of more pushing in there and that's when I will come back in and use my sharp edge one or the sharp point refiner I should say when I was using this tool, it made a little bit of a ridge there. And now I'm just going in and I am flattening that ridge. Keep on referring to the front just to see where maybe it needs a little bit more um, use of the paper stamp. That's one thing about working with metal embossing. You have to revisit things that you have done. Um, you know, when you do something on the one side, you need to counteract it on the other side or sometimes even on the same side. Okay, I think I'm fairly happy with this. And next I'm just going to go over now and I'm going to start using my sharp tip and I'm just going to start pushing it. Um, if you can look at this here, you will see that some of those points is not completely in the stencil there. It stopped just before the little sharp edges. So I'm just going to go and slowly move that in there. Actually, I'm wondering if I try and use this one. This might just work better. Oops. Yeah, it works so much better that it just even go off the paper. Oh, off the. So I think I'm rather going to use this one to push it in there. I slip quite a bit when I get to the end. But I am going to use this little um, eraser tool to erase it. Or I can use the same tool to erase that. that looks when I was playing around with the stencil, I did these samples. So for this sample, I started with the feather lines outside the design there. And with this one i've actually sort of connected it with the ones there personally i think i prefer this one rather than this one because it's almost as if there's a disconnect but that's for me personally you can decide how you would like to do yours when you work with this feather and that's the beauty of art and doing things like this you can have 10 people using exactly the same materials and thing and you will have 10 different um, projects in the end or pieces in the end first i'm going to do is i'm going to take my um, teflon tip tool and i'm going to do the main vein that is going to go through here when you look at this one yeah you can actually see there just to define it a little bit more than the rest of them because usually when you look at the feather um, you will see it is you can definitely see that well even better from the back okay there you go so that's the next step i think for that one i am going to work on my um soft mat just to give it that little bit more definition and how wide I think I'm going to use this one. This is going to be a little bit slow. And 
You can also use, um, if you so wish, you can also use your refiner for that. I just feel more comfortable at this moment using my Teflon tip tool. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to push it down right to the bottom there. It's not completely in the center, but... Um, I'm okay with what that is. When I do things like this and it's not 100% straight, I leave it because sometimes trying to fix something, you actually make a bigger mess out of it. So when you look on the inside, you can see that vein. I'm still going to keep my um, stencil on and working from the back, I'm just going to start filling in those small lines. I'm working on my paper pad, I'm working on the back of the copper and I am using my stylus and I'm just going to continue on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a longer line. So um, I'm going to come take it from the end there and I'm going to bring it around the center and just start pulling it in to that one. I'm going to do exactly the same with this. This too, I'm going to leave. And the reason for that is I still need to connect those once the stencil is off. But for these ones, I'm going to come in. And then once that is done, um, all these ones, I will just extend those ones into there. So the longer ones, those are the ones I'm going to concentrate on for now. was um, as I was working here and I keep on going front to back or back to front was I made sure that the lines I'm doing is definitely connected with this big the first one or the first vein that I did so that it, it looks like it is connected and not a disconnect with this I've just picked up the lines and I continue on that is basically one feather but it would have looked really funny if it was just the one line going down so you just fill up try and connect as many of those there's some of them that's not connected some of them is connected once i've removed the stencil i will just come back in i will connect those and then i will draw in those lines as well going to come in with my paper stump and I'm just going to go around and just flattening around. Next step is I am going to remove all these or erase um, these little tips and again I you can start from there right from the tip let me show you you can start um, from the tip working that way i just always find that it is best it works better if you work from the outside back towards um, your design so i work from the back and push it in towards my design now, of course this one doesn't want to work okay 
perfect looks like they are all fixed now so the next step is um, to go in and refine on the outside So there you can also see there it made a little bit of a dent or a bend there. I'm just going to leave that right up. Can you see there? Let me move this. Yeah, there you go. So I will fix that right at the end as well. that I have refined I'm just going to come in with my paper stump again and just flatten the areas around it So next, I think it definitely needs a border of some kind. And um, seeing that this stencil has a border around that you can play around with, I think I'm going to do that. I'll give it, yeah, I'm going to use this side. And I'm going to do the dots. Or shall I do the squares? Um, Now I think I'm going to do the dots. So I'm just going to put down my stencil, tape it down, and then I am going to do the, um, the border around. up as usual once you've worked with a stencil or you worked on the back just going to come into the front and you are going to flatten around and there I will definitely have to use the eraser and just do it now while I am busy there which is now I forget about it well in case we will notice it The reason I kept on moving the stencil around, apart from that it was bigger than what this piece of copper is, is to show that you don't have to use a stencil exactly the way it is. You can change it, you can use it differently, make it work for you. I'm going to try and fix that little dent that was in there. So I'm going to come back and I was working on my foam mat. So I'm just going to come back in and I'm just going to see if I can lightly push it back again. It's still there. I don't want to work too much with that kink. I rather leave it in then what i am making a big mess with that but just working with it looks real good um they used it was the kink that was there but i think i've got most of it out okay so next i'm going to fold this with wax and also the i find that the edges of the copper is really sharp 
and I don't just want to keep it and there you can see it's just it, it's really sharp I think I'm going to grab my roll of copper tape that I have and maybe just give it a another border with the tape just because it is so sharp and I don't want to cut myself when I'm using my notebook one thing that I just need to do or would like to do is just to put my name here that's optional but I always think it's good when you do have your name on and even if you can put a date on there that's very nice because when you look back at your things you can see how you have improved um, over the years so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I have folded the back with wax I didn't fold these ones on the side or the frame just because I don't think it's hollow enough or deep enough for that but I definitely wanted to give some support for the feather otherwise if you're going to press on it it's just going to make a big dent next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the copper strips around extra thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this with um, an alcohol swap I was considering doing some coloring on here or maybe even use um, some blackening or patina but then I thought no there's more than enough coloring on the um, Upo paper with the alcohol ink so I've decided against that what I did realize now is for next time I have made a note that to cut my tape straight and don't think I can just go ahead and use the tape that's not straight it makes it a little bit more tricky um, to work with and also I will definitely cut a, a wider strip so that my fold over to the back is going to be wider and just give you a little bit more um, grip to hold on to as well. I'm working with my wax side on this designated um, perspex, perspex or no, yeah, I just know what this perspex, just to make sure that the wax doesn't go onto my hard surface. Yeah. So I think this is clean enough. Once everything is done, I will go ahead and seal it with the sealer, the lacquer sealer that we always use. Next is just putting all of this together and I'm going to be using my handy dandy um, 450 quick dry adhesive. I really like working with this adhesive. I'm just going to put my Yupo paper on there. And there you go. Decided not to keep the cardboard. I'm going to use, and it is just a green Sharpie, and I'm going to go around the edge here. Oh, there's some glue. Spilled over. Yeah. And I'm just going to run the Sharpie. It's just going to round it off. Oh, the Yupo paper, I, I can't remember if I mentioned it. It's a translucent one. You also get a white one. Um, I could have used the white as well, but I just had a piece that was already an off cut from the translucent. So trying to work through my off cuts as per a challenge it's going to take a long time but yeah so there you go next i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to glue this up the reason why i do it this way as well is when this notebook is finished or full i can go ahead and remove this from the cover I might 
lose the color that I need to cut to cut it out with this but this way at least using an extra substrate substrate to put your things on it gives you that reusable or recycle I don't really call it recycle but reusable for something else um, especially when you make give it as a gift to somebody and they have the opportunity afterwards to go ahead and once the notebook is full they can remove it and then they still have the um, the art piece that you have made the metal embossing or it is an art piece that you have made for them and they can frame it For this, I'm also going to use the um, glue. And there's a variety of glues that you can use. You don't necessarily have to use the 450. It's just for me, it is a very nice glue and I really like working with that. Okay, so I'm just going to knock this down. I think I'm just going to give it a minute or two and then I really start working it down. Maybe start from the inside out. There's so many possibilities that you can do with this, especially on the pewter. Um, you can bring color in with the copper as well. Absolutely, um, you can do that. But I think it will really be very good when you start bringing it in with the um, pewter. I started off with or we started out with a piece of copper as well as a stencil which is available from the Esmeric Art Store and this is what we have done. I think it came out very nice. I'm very happy with this but then again I'm happy with everything that I do make you've enjoyed spending time with me in the studio today and always remember the world of reality has its limits the world of imagination is boundless mm -hmm.